See what the Lord will have to speak to us today. The local country Baptist church where they met had a uh, phone call and the church secretary answered the call and introduced herself. This is such and such at such and such Baptist church. And the guy on the other line said, I want to speak to the head hall, get the trough. <laughs> and the secretary said, Excuse me, what'd you say? I said, I want to talk to the head hog at the trough. Said, sir, if you're asking to speak with our pastor, then that is about the most disrespectful, unhonoring, worst thing that I've heard anybody ever call a man of God. You need to show respect and honor to a man of God such as our pastor, and I will not tolerate that kind of disrespect. The man said, well, I'm a local rancher and I just sold a thousand head of cattle and I'd like to give the church $10,000. Secretary said, hold on, dearie, I think I see that big fat hog walking down the hall right now. <laughs> so, remember this, that a change of perspective leads to a change of behavior. It did with that lady. A change of perspective will always lead to a change of behavior. It's amazing how a little bit of money may have influenced her opinion. Well, it's the same way with us. When we find out really a new perspective to look at something, it'll change our entire behavior. This morning I want to look at a passage, and I uh, thought that was going to come up one at a time, but I guess it didn't. In Psalms 100, verse 3, we'll look at that one item at a time. What a, a passage that has so much in it. Know that the Lord is God. Well, that's enough to preach on for a week right there. It is He who made us. That's enough right there to preach on for a week, that He made us. And we are His. That means we're not our own. And we are his people. That means we belong to him. And then to wrap all that up, he gives more clarification to say, the sheep of his pasture. Oh, you go home with just that verse right there and just be fine and dandy if we could just live up to that one verse that he's God, he's the Lord, he's in charge. He made us. We didn't make ourselves. He didn't one day say, you know what, I'd like to be born one day. Well, that was in God's plan long before you ever even thought of. God had that all planned. And that we don't belong to ourselves, even though most of the time our decisions are based on what we want, not what God wants many times. But the culmination of this verse is we're the sheep of this pasture. And so this morning as we look at this, we want to see really what that last part of that verse means when it culminates to say we, God's people are the sheep of his pasture that's who we are now, forgive me for this subtitle but I couldn't help it are you one of the good sheep or the bad sheep that's uh, what I want to be able to focus on this morning see, see really where you fit in because if you're a Christian you are a sheep I don't know if you're a good one or a bad one, but you're one of those because that's what God calls us. You know, he could have made any kind of animal be what we are. I mean, but that's not what he chose. You know, he could have chosen an elephant or a giraffe or all those kind of, or donkey. Well, he may have thought of that one, but uh, the, anyway, but he called us a sheep. That's the kind of animal you say, well, did God create it? And then came up the illustration. I think he knew the illustration ahead of time and made a sheep to coordinate what we would be. He so put in a sheep the qualities that he wanted to show what his people were to be. And so, the, or what his people were going to be. And so let's look at this and see what it is, because if we can get a new perspective of who we are, we'll get a new perspective on our behavior and change what we do and how we think and how we react to what God leads us. So the first one point is, is that sheep need 
a shepherd. It says in Matthew, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. And then Matthew uses these words to describe individuals who are harassed and helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. You have to understand that sheep without a shepherd are harassed and helpless. They are so dependent on somebody else, they can't even get by in life. They can't survive in life. So that brings us to a question, why do sheep need a shepherd? What is it that makes sheep so dependent on a shepherd? Well, the first deal is that they're so dependent. It says in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord, if you're saved, is your shepherd. Why? Because you and I are sheep and sheep need a shepherd. Not every animal was created that way. Lions take care of themselves. Horses take care of themselves pretty much. And zebras take care of them. I mean, you go on. Squirrels take care of them. I mean, we don't have animals that necessarily have to have someone with that kind of constant care that are so dependent. Most animals are independent. But God is telling us, don't be so independent. It doesn't say that we don't have responsibilities, don't get me wrong, because we have responsibilities as Christians. But don't be so independent that you don't think that you need God. Now when you think of sheep, you have to remember as animals, they're not the sharpest knife in the drawer. You're not going to see many circuses or performances where are going, and now watch this sheep perform. You know, you're going to find a dog or some other animal do that performance. The sheep normally aren't going to be doing those kind of things because normally they're so dependent. You can see, matter of fact, uh, Reverend R.I. Williams used to call in his sermons to the local Norfolk newspaper every week before Sunday came so the people could open up the newspaper and see what each church's pastor's sermon was, was going to be. So he called in as he normally did, and he told the lady, you know, she asked what, Pastor Williams, what is your sermon title? And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And then the lady made a little reference back to say, is that it? And he goes, that's enough. And then, you know, they joked and then hung up. And he opened the newspaper that week, and lo and behold, to his chagrin, his sermon title said, the Lord is my shepherd, that's enough. Well, even though she had made a mistake, he left it that way for that Sunday morning sermon because he thought it fit quite well. The Lord is my shepherd, that's enough. I got everything I want, everything I need, everything I'm gonna need, no matter what I have in life, if he's my shepherd, which he is, that's enough. I don't know what you're going through. You may feel like you need more, but according to this, just having him as my shepherd is enough. If I'm submitting to his shepherding, that's the key. Or am I still acting independent of what he wants me to do? Because you have to remember this. If I, or you, if I have possessions, if I have wealth, if I have health, if I have education, if I have any smarts, if I have any blessings, if I have anything at all, it isn't because Tim Strickland was too smart. It was only because I have a shepherd. Period. End of sentence. Because I don't have anything of that I just mentioned short of God shepherding me to do that. And if I have anything good, it wasn't because I was smart enough to get it. My shepherd was smart enough to lead me to it. And if you pull yourself up by your belt and say, well, I can make my decisions myself. Well, good luck to you. You'll find out how well sheep do by themselves. If you want to look back on your life and say, you know, those are the biggest screw-ups I ever made in my life, that's when you started acting like a sheep without a shepherd. Those were the big boo-boos in life were those times that we acted independent from God and not letting Him shepherd us. Now, most people don't treat Him like a shepherd, but treat Him like what I call emergency flashers. 
You know, on your car, you have a button somewhere. You may not even know what it is because you had not had an emergency yet in your car. But there's a button somewhere on your car called the emergency flasher. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's over here, sometimes it's over there. And if you have an emergency, you're to push that button and your lights will flash and that'll help you while you're doing that emergency care that you need to take care of in your car. When the emergency's over, you push it again and boom, you're on your way. The emergency's over. Well, pretty much most people want that kind of shepherd from God. God, if I get in trouble, if my health goes down, if my wealth goes down, if my prosperity goes down, if any trouble happens, if I get out of work or if things really get, I'll click you on. And when that emergency's done, I'll click you off because I've got it from here. I mean, you know, I don't really need your help anymore. I got it. You help me out and I'm strong and I'm healthy and I'm better off and here we go. And if I need you again, Lord, I know where to push your button. Matter of fact, your psalm would be this. The Lord is my emergency flasher. I'll push him when I need him. That's not what the verse says. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll be in lack of nothing because I'm under his care 24-7, 365. Whether times are going good or bad, I submit to his lordship. Matter of fact, it says he makes me lie down. See, I am such, I don't even know where green pastures are. I don't, I'm so dumb as a sheep, I don't even know to lay down when they're there. He's got to make me lie down. Because I wouldn't know a green pasture from a burnt pasture, I guess, as a sheep. He's got to make me lie down, is what the verse says there. Because I don't even know where it is. He, and when you have a sheep that's lying down, you ask any shepherd, and they'll tell you that. That's a satisfied sheep. He's got his belly full. He's not worried about any enemy coming or any wolf coming. He has no cares at all. That's the only time a sheep will lie down. See, my Lord, if I follow him, he's going to meet my needs. He'll be enough. And he's going to let me lie down. Then I'll have everything I need. And if I don't have what I feel like I need, I think it was Matthew Henry said, then either I don't need it or I don't need it right now. I'll get it when I do need it because he's my shepherd and he's going to provide everything I need at the time he needs it. You say, Brother Tim, I, I'm not getting answers to these prayers. Well, one reason, he may be your shepherd and he knows better of what you want than the thing you're actually praying for. You know, Ruth Graham, the deceased wife of Billy Graham, once said that if the Lord would have answered all my prayers yes that I prayed for, I'd have married the wrong guy several times. <laughs> but she didn't. The Lord said no to her prayers, and that's why she married a man named Billy, Billy Graham. Because the Lord said no, no, no. And she was saying, Lord, why don't you answer yes? But a yes answer would have gave her the wrong answer. Why? Because the Lord was her shepherd and he knew better than she knew. He knew what she needed. She needed Billy. And she was glad she waited on Billy. You see, God knows better than we know. He can make us lie down in the best pastures, not the pastures we think are best. That's why we need a shepherd. That's why we have... That's why we want to be in church. That's why we want to hear the word. That's why we want to study the word. Lord, I, you're my shepherd. I got to get directions from you. If I follow my own directions, oh man, where am I going to lead up? I'm going to be just in more trouble. You know, we also need a shepherd because sheep are directionless. They have I no idea where to go. They don't know where water is. You know, there's animals that can just make their way to water because they can just sense the water. They know where the best pasture. Sheep, they don't know any of that. They are just, that's why it says, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my, my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Why? I don't know where that is. He said, well, I do. Well, good luck to you on that as well because sheep don't. They're directionless. You say, I'll make, I know I'm going to make. So many people I've seen make decisions based on their flesh and it just ends up in trouble. Instead of what the shepherd says to do, 
The shepherd knows which way to go. Matter of fact, John says his sheep follow because they know his voice. See, sheep are kind of blind. You know, a sheep can only see 15 yards ahead of them. That's not far, you know. It's not even far as that front row. And if there's a, there's a ship, there's a wolf at 20 yards, <laughs> you're in bad shape. Because you can only see 15 yards, but guess what? Your shepherd's got good eyes. But you've got to listen to his voice because in this world there are many voices, including your own, the world, the flesh, the devil, society, popularity, all of those voices are hollering for you to go in different directions. We better make sure we're hearing the right one. Uh, in 2005, USA Today came out with an article. It was... Uh, it occurred in Turkey. There were several families, I believe there were something like 26 families had all of their sheep in one place there in Turkey. And one of those 1,500 sheep, I don't know if he got a little suicidal thought or what, but he just went right off the cliff. And 1,499 sheep followed him and plunged off that cliff. Don't look at me that way. Look up, USA Today, 2005, that happened. That's how sheep are. Now, praise the Lord, only 450 died because by the time they fell, the stack started getting higher and higher until 415 of them died. And the next one, the stack was where they didn't fall as high and they had a little cushion like a mattress. And the rest of the thousand didn't perish but they would have if it had been further down. So 450 of them died, but all of them went off because one of them did. You know, I'm sure it was like a cliff and they go, ooh, that looks like fun because they couldn't see splat down there. And then the next one, the next one. That's what a lot of people do in this. I'm following whatever the world's doing. Whatever's popular, whatever looks good, because look what's on TV. All oh, those people are so happy. Look at those rich people, they're so happy. Look at those people, they're so happy, popular. Oh, follow them. Go head on. But sheep that are following their shepherd don't do that. The shepherd didn't go off the cliff. A sheep did. We're not following each other. We're following our shepherd. Now, we want our leaders to follow the shepherd, and we'll follow them. But we don't just necessarily follow all those other sheep. They weren't listening to the voice of their shepherd. You know, some people climb the ladder of life only to get to the top and find out it was leaning against the wrong building. You know, it's one thing to climb the ladder, but your shepherd needs to tell you what, what, what roof to put it on. Because there's a way that seems right to a man, but they're in thereof is death. You can tell those sheep that. Not only are sheep dependent and sheep directionless, sheep are also defensiveless. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow death, you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then he goes on to say, when I, you prepare my table, the, my food, you even can do it in the presence of my enemies. Why? Because you protect me. It doesn't matter if there's wolves over there and over there. As long as I have my shepherd, I don't have anything to worry about. Plus you have a rod that rod is, if a wolf comes up, he'll beat the tar out of him with that rod. The staff he uses to guide, the rod he uses to beat off any enemy that comes against those sheep. He'll beat them senseless. So sheep have nothing to worry about because their shepherd has a rod and he's not afraid to use it. You ever notice sheep, God didn't give sheep like he gave other animals. Some animals, when they have an enemy come, they fly away up in the air. Some have teeth, sharp teeth. Do you know a sheep doesn't even have but one row of teeth at the bottom? Just like gums at the top. Google a sheep's mouth. It's just gums up there. I mean, if they're going to hurt you, I guess they'll just gum you to death. You know what I mean? God didn't even give them a full set of teeth. No claws to just claw. No, no way to run up a tree. No way to burrow underneath and hide in the ground or change colors or run fast to get away. They have none of that. <laughs> They're just ready to be eaten. Except for one thing. 
Praise God, we as sheep are defenseless against everything, but we have a shepherd. And if we'll listen to him, be close to him, abide in him, stay faithful to him, don't have to worry. Who comes against me? He'll beat you. He'll, he'll take care of me. Even when I'm eating with my enemies around me, in the presence of my enemies, it doesn't matter. I can be at peace. You know, a tourist in Syria noticed that as they were watching these Syrian shepherds, they brought in their flocks in the evening before it got dark and they had a pen and it was enclosed. The tourists noticed in all areas except one open uh, place. It didn't have a gate, didn't have a door. It was just open. And, and the shepherd, and they brought the sheep all in there and got them all uh, in the pen. And the tourists noticed, well, that doesn't no help. The enemy will come in that door, in that opening, because you got an opening there. And the shepherd told the tourist, well, that's where I lie down. I am the door. If any enemy comes, it'll come over me. If any sheep exits, it'll have to come over me. But you see, you and I want the protection of God. You better be in that pen. Because if you're out there at night by yourself, independent, I'll do my own thing, you're not protected. You've got to be where the Lord has you. Where the Lord leads you. Where the Lord puts you in his pen. Or else you're out there on your own. He's only protecting the door to where he put the sheep. And those are the ones who will be protected because we are defenseless. The devil is so cunning. He's so deceptive. You say, he doesn't deceive me. That's how deceptive he is. He'll make you think you're not and deceive you in thinking you're not deceived. <laughs> and lead you that direction, which is the direction he wants you to lead. That's how deceptive. But if the Lord is my defense, I don't have to worry about Satan as long as I stay close to him. And then, of course, sheep need to be around other sheep. They're very sociable animals. Various verses in the Bible talk about the flock under his care. Talks about shepherding the flock of God. There's not individual sheep. You know, we don't shepherd sheep. He's not over the sheep. He's over the flock. The flock. We're a flock. And there's nowhere in Scripture, anywhere, that says, I know I'm a sheep, that means saved, and I'm going to be the lone ranger. I don't need the church. I don't need the people. I'm just going to do it on my own with just me and the Lord. You've got to show me that. I don't see that. Where's your flock? I don't need a flock. Oh, really? <laughs> no other sheep can work that way. That's why God chose an animal that was sociable. They're a very sociable animal. Matter of fact, if you talk to shepherds, they'll tell you about a particular kind of sheep that they call the solidarity sheep or the loner sheep. They'll watch particular sheep that won't be grazing with the flock. They'll be out there on their own, kind of secluded. And you ask the shepherd and they'll tell you why they're out there. They've either been hurt by other sheep or hurt by the shepherd, they feel in some way. And so they don't want to be near. One of those sheep kind of butted them and hit them when they were trying to eat or, or caused them something. Because look, if you're going to be in this flock or in any flock or in a sheep flock, there's going to be some time you're going to butt heads. Well, I'm just going to leave that flock and get me another flock. Well, wherever you go to flock, church or sheep, you're going to butt heads sometime. And you're not going to be in your home with your family and wife, and, other, and you're not going to butt heads with somebody in your family sometimes. You don't leave your family. But that sheep's over there saying, I'm just not going to have any part to do with those other sheep. And they do that. And shepherds say, you know, they have to get them to come back into the fold because it's important because sheep need other sheep. They need to trust other sheep. They rely on other sheep. You see, we rely on each other. See, some of what you'll get today in church was from the worship. Some will come from the word. But some God has for you from other sheep. 
and he has you to minister to other sheep. See, some, some, I guess it should be on Sunday morning going, I need to get up and go to church. Somebody needs me. That's usually how people, I want them all to get up and go to church. Nah, I don't think so. No, somebody needs me. I got to be there. What if I will go to that retreat? Uh, don't know if I need that or not. No, you need it. Somebody needs you. That's the flock we've lost. All perspective of church. Who can I minister to that's hurting in that church today? Praise God somebody did that for you. I know somebody did it for me. If you can't say amen, maybe God may be leading you to where you're going to need another sheep. I remember sheep reaching out to me and helping me. The message helped me, the worship helped me, but individual sheep helped me. And we've got to know each other well enough to know how we need each other. See, if you're not plugged in, you don't know who's hurting. You, did you know she just lost her husband? Did you know he just lost his job? Did you know? You can't find that out just coming and going. You've got to know the sheep. Jesus said, I made you flock. Sometimes we may get to heaven and say, Lord, you know, back there in 2015, that prayer never got answered. I, I just, I never got that answer and that help. I, I guess you just overlooked it. No, I had it. Susie was going to give it to you. Who's Susie? You don't know your flock? I just came and went. Here's your sign. <laughs> that was who I had to minister to you in that situation. They were going to help you. But you have to know them and they have to know you so you can minister to them and they can minister to you. That is a lot of God's answer is the flock. It's in a lot of kind of, it's in ministries, it's in events, men's events, it's in preaching, it's, it's a whole combination, but a lot of it comes from the church, the flock, and being ministered to one to another. The sheep are also prone to get what's called nose flies, especially in the summer. The flies get bad, they buzz around. I've got to say this, whether it ruins anybody else's lunch or not, because you got to get the full deal. The flies buzz around, and what they'll do, they'll land in the sheep's nose, and they'll deposit their larva, and the worms will travel from there up and through the brain. Again, I had to tell you that. You won't get the full picture of how important this is to not have these nose flies do that. I don't know about you, I don't want worms in my brain. Sometimes my brain's working not well enough without worms in there. And, but these, that's, this is what sheep are prone to. Do you know the word, another word for Satan is Beelzebub? Do you know what, what Beelzebub means? The Lord of the flies. <laughs> He's the Lord of the flies. Well, if you're a sheep, you gotta watch it. Because even sheep can get nose flies. And nose flies are not a very good situation to be in. You see, nose flies can cause sheep to beat their head against hard objects. Those worms get all in there and it just mess. You ever heard somebody say, that just bugs me? <laughs> you know, you ever said something just bugs you? It's like, it just bugs me. You know, who, somebody's doing something to bug you or circumstances are bugging you. Well, those are those nose flies. They bug us all, man. And man, some things get so, you'll, a shepherd will watch a sheep up against a hard rock. It's easy to identify. He's got nose flies. <laughs> or they'll butt up against each other. They're just going nuts. So if you want to know what can cause bad relationships is to have a sin that you're not dealing with in life. If you want to know how why you stubbornly keep pursuing the same thing over and over, beating your head against the wall, doing something day in, day in, week in, week out, and you're not getting anywhere, there's a possibility you got some nose flies. <laughs> You got some unconfessed, ongoing sin that you just don't want to deal with. And you've let that get all up in your thinking and it's affecting your brain. And what happens is ongoing sin can lead to just stubbornness. I mean, just, this is the way I'm going to be. 
bless God? I prayed about it. <laughs> well, you can pray about it, but you're going to keep doing that same behavior and it's affecting all your relationships and you're blaming everybody else and button heads instead of just getting that nose fly out of your nose. That ongoing buzzing is driving you crazy. Get rid of it. Whatever that sin is, whatever you're holding on to, it's not worth it. And then those flies can eventually blind a sheep. They'll, they'll get up in there and it can start affecting the, the eyes and sheep can go blind to where they can't even see. That ongoing sin is going to eventually blind you to where you're going to say this. You're going to say, you know what? I don't see nothing wrong with me. And nobody can convince you of what you're doing is wrong. Why? Because you're blind to it. You know, one concern I always have about my own personal life is, Lord, please don't let me be blind to anything because we're all so tempted to say, I think everything's okay with me. <laughs> you know, we're real tempted to say, I, I can see what's wrong with everybody else, but I'm looking good. Lord, don't let me say it's all looking good if it's not. If I'm blind to something, if I've let some ongoing sin blind me, please show me that because I don't want these nose flies to blind me in this area. I want to see it because I can't do anything about it and it's going to affect me in a negative way and I need to take care of it. You see, all of us are prone to these nose flies. You say, well, I don't want to have it. You got a prescription? A little antibiotic? A little vaccine? Oh, sure do. Scripture gives me a good one. Uh, David said in the Psalms about the shepherd, you anoint my head with oil. You know what will keep them nose flies out? Put a little oil on your head. That shepherd, some, some I've read where it said they did it daily. I, I don't know if they did it. They did it routinely. They would get the sheep and they'd pour oil on their head. And that oil keeps them flies out. That's oil. We don't do the oil. And guess what happened when they had oil on their head? You butt heads with somebody with another sheep? Let's say, this ain't working here. <laughs> oh, you get the Holy Spirit, which is the oil. Paul said, be filled constantly with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You let that oil of that Holy Spirit fill you daily, your relationships get better. And them nose flies, you'll be tempted, but they don't land there. They just, woo, being filled with that oil of that Holy Spirit. Anoint my head with oil. Lord, pour it on. Pour that Holy Spirit on. I don't want them flies. I don't like having them lay eggs in my nose and affect my brain. That's all the Holy Spirit. That's your prescription and my prescription is to not get those nagging nose flies that all sheep tend to get. Another thing is sheep tend to wander off. We are all like sheep, Isaiah said. We've all gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Me, Brother Tim? Yes. Me, too. I, I, if I'm a sheep, I can be prone to wander off. Well, how do we wander off? Well, some sheep just nibble away. That means they get so busy eating good grass that their shepherd gave them, right? He leads them to green pastures, and those green pastures, they just, mm, oh, 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 that's good, oh, oh. Oh, that's T-bone right there. Oh, that's, that's lobster. Oh, that's good. And they just finally look up one day and they, they've wandered off through the blessings of the shepherd. I don't think y'all missed that one. I'm going to try that one again. Through the blessings of the shepherd. I still don't think y'all got that. You can take and I can take those blessings and nibble, nibble. Oh, it's good. Praise the Lord. And I can nibble away and forget God on the blessings that he gives me. And then I can get out there and then bad things happen. Oh my goodness, that's a wolf. You can't hurt me. There's my shepherd right there. Plus I got all these sheep around me. Nah, nah. Oop, I don't. He's nowhere around. I've nibbled so far away. That's not good. Even in the nibbling, it's still a bad way to wander off. You know, it's another way. Sometimes 
sheep stray to avoid shearing. That means, you know, it's once a year they have to shear all that wool off of them. Some sheep just don't like that. Matter of fact, if you ask shepherds, they'll say, we've got particular sheep that just kind of have an uncanny knack of knowing when that time's coming. And they go wander off. Say, oh no, I think I hear him in there shortening that thing. And they just know it, it's coming. And they don't want a haircut. And they leave and that happens. It happens with some sheep. Now they don't avoid the flock like that solitary sheep. Remember, he got wounded. He don't need the sheep. You know, he's got all his other reasons why he's going to live like a lone ranger. This sheep simply says, I don't like shearing. <laughs> so I head off. Matter of fact, I read in... Uh, um, I think it was USA Today, where they, in 2004, uh, in New Zealand, which New Zealand has more sheep than they have people, that there was a sheep who had hid out, I don't know, I guess he found his own, somehow he, he hid it from the shearing for six years. Six years he avoided, you're supposed to be sheared every year, you get about 10 pounds of wool, and, and so he had already gained, I think it said about 60 pounds I mean, this evening, Google up, they gave him a name, Shrek, because he was such a hermit to stay away from the sheep. They named him Shrek because they had never had a sheep found with six years of wool. I mean, go look at him. He looks, it looks funny. I mean, he's just, you know, he can't see his head, he can't see his neck. It's just, just this big 60-pound ball of wool. It, he became so famous that the day they sheared him, it came on live national television in New Zealand. And they got to do it all there in front of everybody. But see, when you get that much wool on you, you ever had somebody say, you got deceived, you got the wool pulled over your eyes. <laughs> well, that's what happens. You don't shear and you can't see, you can't hardly move. You can't, you can't see if there's a cliff. You can't see if there's a hole. You can't see if there's an enemy. You can't see anything, and you can barely even move to go from A to B. You can hardly function with that much wool on you. What is the wool, Brother Tim? Well, the more I've thought about it, the only conclusion I could think is the gift and blessings of God are really for other people too. See, what do sheep do with wool? They don't make themselves a wool suit. They get it off for helping other people get warm and have nice suits and have nice clothing made out of wool. What I have, some of what I have, now they keep some of their wool. They don't get it down to their bare skin. I mean, they keep some, enough for them. But the other excess begins also to help other people. You see, God's given me gifts and you gifts. Yours to help people, mine to help people. We cannot just take all of our wool for ourselves, lest it blind us and let us, it, let, lest it is our hindrance. We also have to give and use our lives to help other people. And then lastly, some sheep wander off repeatedly. Now, a shepherd gets a sheep and he'll see that it wanders off. Now, that's not good. You're away from the other sheep, which there's help there. Remember, we just mentioned that. And you're away from the shepherd. And so what that sh shepherd will do would bring that sheep back and scold him and try to get him to know not to do that again. And then he does it. And then he does it. And there reaches a point when a shepherd says, you know what, if I let this sheep keep doing that, He's going to die because the wolf's going to be out there one of these days when I'm not able to go catch him and I'm going to find him dead. And as a last result, that shepherd takes both those sheep's front legs and breaks them in two and then gets wood or branches and puts them on there and takes rope or twine or bandages and bandages up two little braces on those broken legs. Now the shepherd's got another problem. Now if it's time to eat, he's got to go down there and pull whatever it is they eat, the grass, and bring it and let that sheep eat it right there. When it comes time for watering, he can't go down there to get water. The shepherd has to go down there and get the water and then physically give it to that sheep. When it's time for 
Evening, he's going to have to be right by that and carry that sheep wherever he needs to be carried to the pen at night and whatever else. It's a lot of work. But over the years, or not over the years, over the time that the bone is mending itself, that sheep and that shepherd get a lot closer. Matter of fact, he has more one-on-one time with that shepherd than he's ever had before. He sees how much that shepherd really does love him. He can see that that shepherd broke his legs because he loved him and took the extra time to mend him back because he loves him. And when those bones heal back, that sheep doesn't wander off anymore. That sheep doesn't want to wander off anymore. That's my shepherd. I'm going to stay by him for the rest of my life. Have you ever been broken? Have you ever wandered off so much where God said, that is enough? I've been through some broken times in my life. I didn't like it a bit. But that was the time the Lord got my attention. He not only got my attention, I found out how close a relationship me and my shepherd could have closer than any time before. I didn't like it. I wanted to hurry and be through, but the Lord had his own timing. And it was over when it was over when my bones were able to heal back. And I want to say this as lovingly as I can, is that our Lord will break bones even today, if need be, because he loves us that much. It's not done out of, you know, out of hate, you know, just like the Bible says we discipline our children. There comes a point when the shepherd has to do that for the sheep's own good. Many believe that maybe David meant this when he said this in Psalms. Maybe he was referring to this kind of thing. Purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Maybe him being a shepherd was referring to that very event. We don't know. But it sure sounds like it. David saying, you broke my bones and you made me clean. You purged me now and I am whiter than snow and I can now hear joy and gladness because now I'm closer to you than ever. You know, I want to be able to tell the Lord, Lord, let me hear from you from now on. <laughs> Don't let me keep rebelling and not hearing you because I'd rather just obey than to have you break my bones and get my attention that way. I'd rather just listen to your voice. And then the last point, the sheep are precious to the shepherd. He even calls them by name. John even said, Jesus said, I laid down my life for the sheep. That's how much, that's how precious we are to him that he would die for his sheep. Remember, the Bible talks about the hireling who's hired. Well, he's, he doesn't care if a wolf comes, he leaves. He said, I'm getting paid by the hire for this. Go ahead and let him die. I'm not going to risk my neck. But we're his sheep. He risked his very life and gave his very life for his sheep. William Dixon lived in England. He was a widower, and he had lost his only son. And one day, a neighbor of his house was on fire. And the grandmother who was raising the boy was able to get out of the house alive, but the young boy was upstairs, and nobody could get to him, so William Dixon climbed this metal pipe got the boy out of the upstairs and climbed down this hot metal pipe. Remember the house is on fire. This pipe is steaming hot and he burned himself terribly on both of his hands on that metal pipe getting that boy down. The town council in that community determined what are we going to do with this boy? He has no living relatives. So two people came to the council to volunteer to take care of the boy. One they heard from who also had lost his only son. They listened to him. And then it came time to William Dixon who wanted the boy. And he walked before the council and he didn't say a word. He just held up his hands. And they saw the burnt pipe scars on his hands. 
and they said, the boy is awarded to William Dixon. He showed his love without a word. The love was in his hands, was in the scars. And that's how much our Father loves us, our Shepherd loves us. The love's in the scars, in the hands. We wrap up with this verse that Psalms 23 wraps up after David showed how to live like a sheep. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Did you catch that? If I'm living like a sheep, dependent on the shepherd, close to other sheep, ministering to other sheep, filled with the Spirit, getting rid of those nose flies, staying close to the shepherd and not wandering off, then what happens? As I'm walking down life, I look behind me and what's following me? Love and kindness and what else? You see it on the passage, goodness. You say, you're pursuing those, Brother Tim? No, they're pursuing me. <laughs> oh, that's not what they were, that's what it shows to me. They'll follow me. I'm just going to live like a sheep and follow what a shepherd says, and those things are going to track me down and you down. Woo, you can't get away from them. You goodness and loving kindness, y'all won't leave me alone. I know, we follow you. You're acting like a sheep. <laughs> Isn't that good? Where's my love and kindness and where's my goodness? Well, maybe you're living independent. These things follow sheep. Everywhere you look, you look behind you and God's saying, I just got to give you some more goodness. Got to give you some more love and kindness. Just look over your shoulder. They're going to follow you all the days of your life. Woo, because you got a shepherd. He likes giving his sheep that. But we got to know that we're the sheep of his pasture. Are we acting that way? When you give your life to Christ, you submit to his shepherding. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you just stand there where you are.